everyone. Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Welcome to Geek My by heart. heart. I'm Jay. I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry. You're sorry. Okay, she's sorry. That's her name for today. And we are going to be doing a review on Incredibles 2. I'm so sorry. You know what it is. Guys, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome to Geek Bye. by Heart. I'm Jay. I'm Lainey. And today we're going to be reviewing Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Finally. 14 years. Finally. Oh my God. Oh man. This is good. Yeah. It was good. I have to admit, like when I first uh, saw the first Incredibles or I heard about it, I was like, I don't want to see it. But then I was really impressed yeah. by it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, they're going to do a follow up and took you, yeah, 14, 14 years, years later, oh my God. follow up here. And of course, the, the Incredibles 2, the movie is, is uh, starring Craig T. Nelson, mm -hmm. Holly Hunter, mm -hmm. and um, Samuel L. Jackson, of mm -hmm. course. And directed by Brad Bird. Brad Bird. Bird, excuse me. Exactly. And he is also the man behind <clears throat> Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. The whole premise of uh, Incredibles 2 is that mm -hmm. the family is back again. And yep. You know, they actually went through some adversities with being a superhero, you know, I mean, they, they went through some of the issues with with the United States and... Um, and the government, they, they kind of wanted to shut, shut you know, shut superheroes down, down. Basically. Yeah. So, uh, the last girl, no, that's the... That's the, that's the, the One of the main characters. Yeah, by Holly Hunter. Um, she basically went in to, um, to deal with uh, working for this group. Mm -hmm. And behind the group, this, this um, villain, um, it's called Screensaver. Saver. Yeah, screen Screensaver. Saver. Yeah. yeah. Screensaver. Yeah. And um, you know, she is a very that villain is a very interesting villain. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I really do like that villain in in some sense. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, it, it was it was pretty it was pretty dope. Yeah, and it's basically they're trying to find out who Screensaver is, and then once mm. they find out, basically trying to save the day once again, yeah. and trying to make uh, superheroes relevant and what should be out in the open. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as of course, uh, you know, I, I have my bad and my good geek about this movie, and first, I don't really have a lot of bad geeks. So. I don't either. When we didn't talk about this, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you yeah. have to say about it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I didn't either. But you know, the funniest thing about it is that I I really do think I really do think it's on par with the first one. Um, okay, it, I suppose it better. Really, is on par with the first one, I, I, I believe. And for the um, the bad geek, what I really do um, hate is the fact that um, I wanted to see the family more involved. I agree. Completely, I see, completely. I wanted to see the family more involved in um in the action scenes. I mean, the first the first part of the action scene was good, but I wanted to see the family more involved. I felt like they left Dash on the side of the road. Yeah, like he was the like everybody actually had character development, but Dash. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was the he was like the he, forgotten kid. Yeah, exactly. And you know, <clears throat> with, with the whole intro of Jack Jack and his powers, and they already knew we we're going to be that talking he had about powers, that. But, but, yeah, but um, on that note, that's my bad geek. That's the only thing I have for the movie that I didn't like. However, my good geek now is first, first uh, the short animation. Remember the animation? Bow. That was so I think, cute. I think it's called. That was Bow. really cute. It was really touching. I actually kind of, yeah. I actually teared up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. However, my other good geek about this movie is the beginning of the movie, the scene where the family was fighting down the minor. Okay. Yeah, they the where they were trying to stop the um the mine thingy, the molin thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thing. forgot what his name is, but I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, they, I think the villain is Underminer. Okay. Yeah, they were trying to stop him, but, but just the whole uh the whole um uh energy with all the family members, all the, the, the family members going together and trying to stop it. It was really good. It mm -hmm. was really it was really good. Another of my good geek is the fact that they use Elastigirl. Okay. Uh, they they used her potential powers, and we never. She got seen a lot of development. That. Yeah, we never mm -hmm. we never seen much of her powers in part one, and now they put her on a on a platform so you can see what she can do, and I really do like that. But I think that was purposeful because in part one it was really more about 
the father's character arc and now it was more about her so like you definitely should have seen that mm. and they did show it to its potential yeah, so I thought that good. was really good too I, good. I agree with that Jack Jack I love that scene with Jack Jack and the raccoon it was I, cute I, I really it was do. cute and it, it was you cute. know what I, I it had me laughing because we have a little two-year-old mm -hmm. you know we have a little two-year-old kid and you know just to see where Jack Jack was was showing down going show down with the raccoon and it kind of oh, it kind of pushed me she would have done the same thing absolutely yeah, she kind of pushed me back to our our daughter mm -hmm. um you know for her to be getting into mischief like that and the fact that Jack Jack has powers and it, it, it's like he's reacting towards the, the raccoon in ways that he probably might not understand but mm -hmm. his powers is reacting towards the, the raccoon but he's reacting as, as a normal baby would <laughs> exactly he just sees something he wants to play with or he wants to conquer and boom he takes off and yeah. that's that another thing that i like about the movie is the fact that they switched roles gender roles with um and it being on yes, the verge of yes, father's day yes, it yes, actually yes. played a very <clears throat> significant part um as basically having the father have a different role from the mother and um you know i, I, I really can say that you know it, it, it actually played a, a, a really interesting part and it really grabs a, it really puts a twist to the movie as well mm -hmm. so that you know you, you can understand what a father probably go through with with his with what, what a mother goes through with her kids mm -hmm. going, uh, bringing them up and mm -hmm. whatever. I think that's very important as well and um, what uh, my last my last good geek is basically the twist with screensaver the villain um, hmm. you know I, I you know what I myself was thinking that it was going to be the the brother that was going to be the villain, but it didn't end, end up, up. It ended up being the sister. I'm 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 very middleish down the road for that. I love the fact that the sister was tech savvy and it showed a woman being tech savvy. But I really wanted it to be an outside character. I did not want it to be either one of them, mm. even I knew it was going to be because yeah, yeah. they did they didn't develop anything for it to happen mm. okay well that's my good geek and you know i know you have such a passion to talk about oh my like, god and do what I you do. don't like so please go ahead make my day all right, all right so there's a little <laughs> lot that was so good about this movie and it hit a couple of different strings it hit me as the average moviegoer and it hit me as a parent so um i kind of might talk about it in those two reference points when i'm talking about my good geek and my bad geek all right um i think i'm gonna go with my bad geek first because there's not that much that i want to complain about um because it was a really just great overall movie um i think that it wasn't a movie for kids like I felt like the writers were writing for the adult and if I really be honest and look back at the first one the first one also had writing for the adults even though the plot was more kid friendly <laughs> whereas I felt like this one was a little bit more adult friendly but I thought that it was more for the adults than it was for kids and obviously it is an animation and I get that but like if you think about also the characters like the preteens can can think about themselves through Violet, especially the girls out there. Um, the little kids, like five or even seven or under, might be you know really enthused with Jack Jack. But especially because Dash wasn't really around, like they kind of use him as like a, a wallpaper in the background. Mm -hmm. It was like I, I didn't see where the people that the kids that were from seven to eleven would find interest of it, other than it being animation. Oh, okay. Now a couple of these is going to be I know my personal things about it but whatever I want to see more of Samuel L. Jackson I want to see more of where's my super suit and the banter between the wife and husband mm -hmm. I think it didn't take away from the movie but I would just love to see that mm -hmm. um, That's true. That's what be. I, yeah I thought that they wasted Dash's powers yeah like you because you I didn't know, see it yeah because you just see him running 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 because yeah. I, I know he can do something different facts but like, like they just wasted it so i just was like <laughs> i wanted to see more of dash because i felt like i saw everybody else yeah. um and like i said i know that's just nitpicky on my part mm -hmm. um and i think that it was a little annoying to see jack jack have like ten thousand powers yeah 
Like I wanted him to have uh, even three what? or four. You know that's what? fine. You know what? You know what? I, I I really I don't mind it. I just I just rather them. I would just rather Jack Jack be a part of an action sequence where his power was used within that sequence. You know what? You know, hold it, that it thought because I want us to get to too much. hold that thought because I can debate you on that too. Okay, so I, I'm glad that you said that because I, I I find different with that. But just as far as my own bad geek for it, mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was annoying that Jack Jack had this power, that power, this power, that power. I was like, all right, how many powers am I gonna have? Like, and every time I thought we were done, it was like, oh, we're about to have another one. So those are the things I was like a little annoying, but to me, it didn't take away from the overall enjoyment of the film. All right, so one of the things I really really loved was the math problem mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. where like anyone especially new york residents who are watching this common core people who are watching this y'all know especially if you've ever tried to reteach your kids when they come home with the math problem or whatever and they're like okay 20 plus 20 you know you just put it in 20 plus 20 and that's that they're like no mom or no dad that's not how you do it that's not how our teacher does it and if you don't do it that way then we're not going to get the credit and yada yada, yada. i was like that was so, mm -hmm. that was a shout out for us. Mm -hmm. And I, and I love that. I hate math. <laughs> I, I liked math though. I, I, I liked math though. Fuck math. I can't with you. Let's not fuck math, okay? Math is good. All right, I love math. Even though you hate math, it's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Screenslaver, I actually liked her message. Especially, I, I forgot exactly what it was, but especially when, um, when Elastigirl was actually chasing the wrong screensaver, mm -hmm. some the the overview of what she was trying to say was like, yo, you know, you're always on your phones and things of that nature or whatever. I just was like, mm -hmm. I was listening that to was what strong. she was saying. I said that that was, that was dope. And, and I was like, why, that's why I say I, I like her villain. Yes. Very yes. I, I thought that what she was trying to talk about was cool. You know what I mean? And actually a little bit seeping into the baggie I forgot to mention was that I, I didn't like how, again, it was very much much more adult friendly on even what she how she did it did you notice that like usually mm. if you watch anything that's hypnotized from a kid standpoint a person that's hypnotized usually is really crazy really mm. ah, yeah. whatever like that hypnotist the guy that was hypnotized was like mm. it wasn't that's, kid friendly what, yeah you know what I mean so I was almost almost bored watching the people that she was hypnotized and I wanted more from that but I apologize I uh, digress we, no, we will talk about that oh okay because you, you you realize that one too I you about got you no I, good yeah because I, I, I digress what you talked about with the gender swap, swapping I love the 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 father staying home and I love the mom being at work or whatever me personally I'm fine either way both at work or both at home as long as we can make money to sustain the house yep. but I think that I'm just seeing that. that on screen mm -hmm. is just so important yeah. you know what I mean seeing that like a father is home taking care of his children a big and a mom is out there handling the business and it's right before Father's Day which right you know, which which gives a lot of respect for the father right well. right and even if it wasn't like I just think that just it being out there that this is what a normal family can look like it's going against the the gender norms or whatever the case may be um, and I think that that's already being established nowadays but I think it's still being established and the fact that it's on front street you know what I mean so I love that part and I just think overall that they had a little bit of social commentary here and there about what's going on in America and I appreciated that too um, so I think just overall this was a great movie All right. All right, so that sums up your uh, your good beat, bad beat. Yeah, I know I uh, talked a lot. Okay. I mean, there's a lot we're gonna be discussing in terms of what, whatever what was said. Um, and one of the things that you do mention mm -hmm. is that you know the hypnotism, which should be kid friendly, and I think the whole entire movie was basically not for kids. I, I, I think I agree. I, I, think, I agree. I think it, it, I agree. it wasn't developed for kids, and even if because even if you do bring a two-year-old to the movie or not two-year-old but you maybe know, seven yeah, ten seven, you know five, yeah ten, whatever um to watch the movie they'd be bored because I, there's I nothing agree. there's I nothing agree. in it that really pulls out as a kid-friendly movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i mean i went to watch the movie and you know there we, we went separately mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah work we, schedules yeah so you know, when I was in the, the theater, there was mostly like adults, and it was m mostly filled. You know, it it, it was so crazy. That's funny you say that because 
I, I went to a 10 o'clock screening and it was mostly adults too, but I just thought because it was 10 o'clock at night. Mm. Like, I, there was a couple kids, you know what I mean? But it was seriously mostly adults. There was a lot of couples there too, yeah. you know? So it was yeah. definitely date night, but it didn't. that didn't phase me because I thought that, okay, it's 10 o'clock, even if it's on a Friday, mm -hmm. it's still 10 o'clock and that like, you're not bringing your kid out that late. So yeah. I didn't I didn't think about that in that aspect, but I completely agree with you yeah. that it, it was more for yeah. millennials, yeah, for 20-ish, for, exactly. you know, for the people that were kids when this came out, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or for the adults that just like animation and just like Disney animation. Yeah, I, I think it was basically, you know, even if, it, even if it's for, for teenagers mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, uh, minor adults and whatever, mm -hmm. but it really, I think to me, I think it really pushed out to um, to uh, the grown set of Absolutely, I agree. I agree with that. One of the most things that I, I really do, um, what I think think the movie stands out a lot about is is the fact that it always it, this well this movie brings a very important message, and you know we both discussed it in our Good Geek Bad Geek, and, mm -hmm. and you know even though it's the the, the, the forefront of having fathers um, on Father's Day, you know, it really did bring a message about fathers and I really did appreciate that yeah, because, I agree. you know, not all the time you're going to see something that really shows some respect for fathers who are stepping it up to the plate, you know, with most of see mothers and that's really good for, for Incredibles too, I really do I really do appreciate that. Um, I'm going to actually take it one step further and not to overshadow that I think that it also just spoke about family. Exactly. Okay, a family that. unit sticking mm -hmm. together um, through any kind of adversity. I think that that was a theme for the first one. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was continued in the second one. Yeah. And especially when the kids went out on a limb to rescue the parents. And when the parents were like kind of surprised, or yeah. then, then they was kind of going to even chastise them. And then it was like, but we should be rescuing you like you guys need help and here exactly, we are exactly. and so like i think that the fact that they are just celebrating families and they were celebrating mm. the parent structure that different things can be brought to the table no matter what yeah. i think was really Teamwork. dynamic yes Teamwork. you that that that's a great summary what um what i do want from this movie even if they're planning on having a part three i'd love to see a more one. stronger villain i agree I'd want to see. I agree. I'd want to see a more stronger villain. I wanted to see the act, the family, um, involved in it more. I wanted to see Dash's power instead of us running around, running around. Um, I wanted to see um, Jack, Jack powers used more in it. I wanted to see Elastigirl. Girl. I wanted to see Invisible Girl. Um, I I can agree with that, but I think that I did like. The division of you seeing them work separately and mm -hmm. seeing them work together. It was not a mistake that you did not see Dad at almost at all. Mm -hmm. That's not a mistake. Mm -hmm. It is not a mistake that you saw a mom more. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is not a mistake that they had an elaborate fight scene at the house where the kids had to act on their own and they had to defend themselves mm -hmm. and I think that part and then when getting the parents in the ship that part too you saw enough of them on their own mm -hmm. and them doing their powers as well and defending themselves as well mm -hmm. that I was fine with it I was fine with them being separated but you still saw their powers and you saw what they can do I even think that having the the thing between Jack Jack and, and the raccoon yeah, yeah, yeah. was purposeful at that also and even when you would see him go into the dimension and they're looking for him or whatever mm -hmm. that was purposeful things too so I feel like they they were going to separate them yeah. they wanted them to have their own light to shine and I think that they did a brilliant job of it so I get what you're saying I, I can agree with that too mm -hmm. but I did like the direction that they went in this one I mean don't get me wrong the direction is fine you know they, I, I just need, I just wanted to, well my little kid side inside <laughs> <laughs> the kids side was hoping to see something much more um, action event uh, yeah I agree you know, it, I agree or even silly yeah because I, I, I didn't yeah. feel like there was nothing really was silly a, no and and that and that's another thing I wanted to touch on because 
there wasn't nothing and that's why I said it over and over again it's not I, I don't think it's kid friendly it's not it's not you know what I, mean? it's, I, it's I not. completely agree with it that it's not, not kid friendly and I mean I can appreciate that that's fine you know because I'm, I'm a big fan of in Incredibles, Incredibles and, and don't get me wrong I probably I probably bring you know like my nephews over to see it and mm. They're like about to be four and nine, but yeah, yeah it's 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 not. But I, I doubt they would be so hyped up and act up over it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There's a lot of nuances, lots of nuances that they would not appreciate, and that adults yeah. would would get a chuckle out of it every single exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. And for this, I really give this movie uh, four out of five. I, I agree with that. I, give, I, I give we are so aloud on that. Uh, it's it. I, I would say four to four point five. Um, it definitely is not a five, like I said, because mm -hmm. of my little quirks or whatever. And for what it's worth, I don't feel that my quirks take away that much from the movie. Mm -hmm. But especially if you are going to be the Incredibles, mm -hmm. like, um, Bring it. you have to find yeah, that balance it. between, um, making sure that the adults are not getting bored out their mind mm -hmm. and that the kids are going to enjoy it. And again, I think they would enjoy it, but I don't think they're going to enjoy it, um, a lot. But, but, but that's the thing because I, I'm not sure if the writers or the director is, is basically tipping on which side to, to put the movie to. If it's no, I think they knew exactly what they were going to do. Or if it's going to be for adults. Mm -hmm. I think they were going know, for adults. I think they were going yeah, for adults. I think they were probably the going for teens or, you know. Teens or um, adults. adults. I agree with that. My biggest question though, even though, uh, you know, a lot of you guys probably might be asking or probably might be having on your head. Hmm. Um, one of my biggest question is, are we going to be seeing an Incredibles where the kids grow older? Hmm. You know what? I hmm. bet you it's going to be the Simpsons. Uh, I bet you it's going to be the Simpsons. They're not going to do that. I, they probably might not. They're not going to do it. They probably might not mm -mm. because, you know, everyone is just so comfortable with the family. Absolutely. Family. Absolutely. So, but I'd love to see that. If, I'd, I'd love to see a, a grown up Jack Jack. I'd love to see. Uh, that guy Dash would be a his, beast. Oh, that guy. Uh, yo. And of course, you know, Disney um, is trying to acquire um, the characters from Comcast. If you guys didn't know, Comcast won, in, um, won, won the deal from, um, from Fox. With their uh, their properties, yeah. With their I was about to say like Disney this. didn't yeah. win that. Yeah. Okay. So, fuck. So Disney is trying to so. oh is God, trying to so. uh, purchase some of the uh, some of the, the elements from Comcast, and I hope they really get it. Get it. Yes. I really hope they. Yes, I agree. It. And uh, that would be a good move for um, you know Fantastic Four. That would be a good good, good move for um, Doom. <laughs> and, and Avatar and some other uh, uh, movies that you know I'm so hyped up over. Man. And if Disney gets that, they're almost a monopoly. Yeah. Like yeah. on easily, easily, almost everything. Easily, like they're almost not a monopoly. So if they easily. get that, easily. Oh, jeez. And you know, as usual, you guys, please subscribe. Please comment. We are longing let to us, hear let, some let comments us know from how you. you. Feel. Just let us know what you feel, what you think. If you mm -hmm. think or talk or whatever we say was bullshit, just say it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll accept it. <laughs> you know I mean? Or how it can be better or <laughs> yeah, what you like. Exactly. And of course, you can um, you can visit us on, on Twitter and, and um, Instagram. Instagram. Geek by Heart. Geek by Heart. Both of them. Definitely. All right. So, as usual. You're who? As usual. You're who? You're who? Who are you? I'm who? Who are you? I'm Lady. I'm, I'm Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you for, for coming. Thanks again, guys. And drop us a See note. Next time. As a matter of fact, we're going to be uh, watching um, Jurassic Park this week. Yes, we are. We're going to be watching Jurassic series. Park this week. And I'm still not giving up on my hope of getting him to sit down and do a Kingdom Hearts review with me. See you guys. Bye. Be good. <laughs>